ClassicGameRoom.com Welcome to Classic Game Room, where I have one of the ultimate video game classics. This is Mist on the Sega Saturn. Prepare to hurt your brain. In case you missed it the first time around, it's never too late to enjoy Mist. The best selling 1993 PC game makes for an exciting 1995 Sega Saturn release. Okay, maybe exciting isn't the right word, but damned good certainly is. Th that's actually two words, but both applicable to Mist. A game that feels downright archaic by modern standards, like I'm browsing the World Wide Web on Netscape in 1994 without that pleasing early 1990s modem sound. Bing! Gosh, I miss that. Instead, what we get is a well-detailed, elaborate, mysterious adventure that convincingly drops you into another world, stuck on an island with only a few cryptic messages to get you started. So, who got stuck instantly in mist? Raise your hand. This guy. Yeah, puzzle games are not my strong point, I have no patience, and there's there's no flamethrower in Mist. How they put all this time into a game and forgot a flamethrower is beyond me. So instead of just burning down the island for insurance money to buy a spaceship and fly your way out of there, you have to solve puzzles. For a long time, Mist was the best-selling PC game ever, even outselling Thexter, which is nonsense. Because as good as Mist is, it's no Thexter. Come on! What world do we live in? I guess a world where people like Mist. It's common knowledge that Mist is a good game, but what makes it good? It's hard for me to believe. Most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine, it's one of our sons. Because playing Mist today feels like you're taking the horse and buggy out to buy kerosene for your lantern. You have to play Mist with a pencil and paper to take notes. You can't even tweet your friends on Facebook when you solve a puzzle. Technically, it looks dated. The beauty of Mist is in its storytelling. It drops you in the middle of nowhere with only your brain to get your way out. And no, you can't take it out and swing it at people. I tried. That's like the first thing I tried because I was immediately over my head with Mist. I'm, I'm horrible at these games. I never played Mist when it was new. I was too busy playing Doom and Wolfenstein. It's not a fast paced game as you can see. If this were made today it would be a first person shooter. Instead this is more like a point and click adventure game. It takes forever to get anywhere. But that forces you to pay attention to everything. Every visual, every audio cue is a clue about something. So pay attention. So without giving away any spoilers here, the first thing you'll want to do is explore the island thoroughly, flip all those switches, and get the hang of the controls and the puzzle solving style. The point and click interface is somewhat old fashioned, obviously, but effective. So, uh, more advanced than those old school Sierra games where you had to type in something 6,000 times until it registered. Kick over the cauldron. Place foot on cauldron and push. Pull cauldron using hand. Call for help. Pray that something moves... J jump into bottomless pit. Okay, so after I figured out how to rotate the tower, I got some clues and made note of them using pencil and paper. Set the clock, eventually figured out how to move that gear thing, and that activates this thing, which really isn't all that apparent. 
I guess it kind of is once, once you figure it out, but it's really cool and very well executed. Now, Myst is best known as a PC game, but it's also available on numerous game consoles like the Sega Saturn, seen here, the Panasonic 3DO, and just about everything else that could run Myst. To get the most out of it, I would really recommend not playing it with the internet. A, a walkthrough will give away pretty much everything. And that diminishes the feeling of being alone, because that's what makes Myst Myst. In 1993, you couldn't Google map your way out of this place. AAA is not coming for you. It's kind of like if your iPhone ran out of batteries and you didn't have your 3DS with you and nobody nearby had an iPad and the wireless hotspot place was broken and, wow, being alone just doesn't exist anymore. So a big thanks to Nathan from San Antonio, Texas for sending Mist to the show, along with Command and Conquer on the Saturn. Hey Nathan, thanks for breaking my brain. I really didn't use it much anyway. Oh no, I left my keys in the spaceship and it locked me out. Well, now I've got to solve some more puzzles. Mist is not for everyone. It's extremely challenging, but rewarding. Something that so many storyline-driven games are not. When finishing a game, it requires nothing more than simply having the time to finish the game, and the ending is nothing more than a build-up to the next sequel. What's what's the point? Where's, where's the feeling of accomplishment? Mist pushes you to think. It's a cool story from start to finish. I like the movie references in Mist, like the pseudo-Blade Runner music in here. And how about that chair? Those of you playing Bioshock Infinite should recognize something similar. straight out of Blade Runner. Mist has gone on to inspire a lot. It's an important piece of gaming history, but it's not for everyone. It's really very difficult. If you want to just get the storyline, play with an internet walkthrough. I'm glad I played it, although I have to admit that, that I needed to peek at some of the puzzles online, or else I think I'd still be looking for that first door. But when I figured out stuff on my own, I, I was rewarded with a feeling of, of accomplishment. Like, alright, I'm not a complete moron. Although in reality, I'd still be stuck on that island after having died of starvation in two days. If you like the looks of it, don't miss Mist. <laughs> 